Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining us here in Live Fit Kitchen. We have Dr. Purcell with us once again. Hello and welcome. Hello Alicia and welcome. Thank you for joining us. So we are, of course, doing our holiday series. We love healthy holiday cooking, and this is a stuffing recipe that is gluten-free, and we love gluten-free for lots of reasons. We were talking about it just before we started filming. Why don't you share with everybody? <laughs> well, quinoa, which is gonna be our stuffing for tonight, is a gluten-free grain. But more than that, quinoa is actually a pseudo-grain, which means that it's not a grain at all. It's actually a super seed. And in fact, it was rediscovered about two decades ago here in the US. A couple brought it back from Peru. It, it grows natively in Peru and Chile and Bolivia. And quinoa was once known as, known as the gold of the Incas. So the entire Incan empire relied on quinoa because it's a very complete source of protein. It has all of the amino acids that are necessary to qualify it as a complete protein, which means for vegetarians it's safe, for people with celiac disease who are sensitive to gluten, this is a sure fire recipe alternative and very delicious for Thanksgiving dinner. It is, I have served this on my own holiday table at home and I love this recipe because it's so simple. I've been using it on and off for years now. Um, there are quite a few ingredients, but it really is very quick and easy to put together. So let's talk through what's in here. Now we use a cup of quinoa. Obviously, you know, the, the bigger the bird you have to stuff, the more quinoa you're going to need to use. I used this size for stuffing four Cornish hens. I chose to do Cornish game hens one year for Thanksgiving instead of turkey. And also an important note, the bigger the bird, the less the stuffing inside is going to cook. So if you have a large bird, even just a large chicken, or if it's a turkey, you might just put a little stuffing in the bird and then cook the rest separately in an oven dish. It works much better that way. Otherwise it's really very crunchy and quite raw, even after several hours in the oven. So. We use our quinoa and we rinse and drain it first. We use two thirds of a cup of chopped green apple, a quarter cup of dried cranberries, two thirds of a cup of a brown onion chopped small, half a cup of celery also chopped small, a third of a cup of walnuts and a quarter of a cup of sunflower seeds. So you can see we have lots of nuts and seeds and healthy things in here, which is such a better alternative than bread, right? Such a better alternative, much higher in fiber and remember, Bread, what is it? Flour and water make glue. It's very bad for our digestive systems and it certainly doesn't have the level of nutrition that this stuffing provides. Yeah, this is super healthy and really delicious and it looks pretty on the table, so let me run you through it. So we use our cup of quinoa, rinsed and drained, sorry, it's a little hard to fill from the bowl, so it's gonna take a little more to do that. Okay, a cup of quinoa, next up the two thirds of a cup of green apple. Now the apple, what I did was I actually used, you know the nifty little apple slicer, you push it down on the apple and it makes it into pieces. I used that and then cut the apple into halves on some pieces and thirds on others because this really is a much quicker way to get an apple all chopped up for your recipe. So I cut the pieces and then just really thin slices because you want the apple, you want the flavors and the juices of it to really get into the quinoa and provide some of the moisture to help it to cook. So we cut that up. And Alicia's using a green organic apple because or apples tend to be more sprayed with pesticides than other fruits and vegetables. Additionally, she's keeping the skin on so it provides more fiber for our dish. And it's pretty too. And it is pretty. Apple skin's pretty. And it's really great, the combination of flavors in this recipe. The green apple, a little tart. We'll talk more about the cranberries, a little sweet. And then of course, when onions caramelize, they're a little sweet and everything comes together very nicely. Mm -hmm. And the nuttiness with the seeds and everything, it's really good. Now these cranberries, Dr. Purcell actually complimented me on my cranberries. They are dried cranberries and normally I don't care for dried fruits of any kind because they're usually dried with sulfurs and lots of sugar and other things like that. These cranberries are very dark in color. They have no sulfur, they are organic and they were sweetened with apple juice. Now I would of course prefer that they be not sweetened at all. I'd rather just have cranberries dried and left alone but I couldn't find them anywhere. So I did find these apple juice sweetened ones. And you know, they look really interesting. They're kind of dark and very plump and juicy, right? You I tried them. one, they're very good. <laughs> okay, so just a quarter cup, because we don't like to overdo 
the dried fruit because they're just really little calorie bombs, dried fruits. <laughs> just don't need it. Tasty little calorie bombs. They, they are indeed. Okay, so next up, the brown onion. I chopped it very, very small. We'll take two thirds of a cup. And as Dr. Purcell said, the onion really gives this some sweetness and a little bit of kick. Yeah, just little pieces there, two thirds of a cup. Okay, next up, the celery. With the celery, you'll notice that I chopped it very, very small, itty bitty little pieces. It just seems to work better in the recipe that way. The bigger pieces never quite cook right. They come out a little funny. So mm -hmm. let's see, we're after a half cup of And celery, celery always adds nice flavor to stuffing. All kinds of stuffing usually have celery and some onion. And even when the celery cooks and it's not as hard, it just adds a very nice flavor. It does indeed. Okay, now we're also using walnuts and sesame seeds. For the walnuts, I actually went to the bulk food section of the store and they had walnut, you know, pieces yeah. that are much less expensive and already chopped. So you don't actually have to chop them yourself, which is what I've always done previously. So now I know better. So a third of a cup of walnuts. And then for the sunflower seeds, and you can give us some nutritional information on Absolutely. these too as well. The sunflower seeds, you know I normally go raw whenever there's a choice. The sunflower seeds I chose just lightly roasted. No salt, but just roasted a little bit to bring out the nuttiness in the seeds as mm -hmm. well. I was wondering if you were gonna choose the roasted or the raw ones. So many of our viewers may know that when we're choosing nuts or seeds, we can actually pan roast them at home just on a little bit of medium heat on the stove in a skillet and it does bring out a little bit of a toasted flavor in them and it adds more to the recipe than if we just used a raw sunflower seed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I was putting them on a salad or if I was eating them in something else I would cho have chosen raw because I prefer usually to go raw over roasted um, but for this recipe and seeing as it's going to get cooked anyway I thought that I'd go for that extra flavor. Now you can see all I did was I just put everything into the bowl. I'm stirring it through with a fork just to make sure that everything's well combined. And this is where you have two choices. You can, as I said, very lightly stuff, under stuff the bird that you're cooking. And I really mean it. I mean, when I did the Cornish game hens, you know how small those things are? It just barely cooked inside of those. So if you are stuffing a turkey or something larger like that, uh, like a big chicken or whatever, I would definitely understuff and then cook the rest separately. Yeah, okay, probably so a better idea to cook it separately. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think yeah. so too. Um, now you can see I've just combined that, pretty much just stirred it through. It looks really pretty. There's a lot of vegetables and other stuff. It's not so heavy on the quinoa. You can see that the quinoa is almost mm -hmm. like an add-on to the rest of the ingredients. So what I did was I, I prepared this at home. I put some into an oven dish that had a really heavy lid and you can actually cook a, a fair thickness of it. I just did a little bit today for demonstration. So when I put this quantity into an oven dish, we're going to use about six ounces of water for this amount of quinoa and everything. You can go a little under if you like, and that does tend to, to work well. If you're gonna have time to check in on it, maybe put four ounces at first, check on it after a little while, give it a stir to fluff everything up. And then if you need to add a little more water because the water stops it from burning and helps to create steam, which cooks it gently. Right, one of the things you do wanna avoid though is putting too much water in. Definitely. Because then you'll get soggy quinoa stuffing. Really gross at the bottom. So it's yeah. almost better to put a little bit less and then check in on it because you can always add more as opposed to having overcooked sticky quinoa stuffing. Yeah, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you can cook this at whatever temperature everything else in the oven is cooking at. Um, today I had some stuff going that was on really low for a couple of hours. I put it in for an hour of that. The low cooking stuff came out and I was cooking some stuff with a higher temperature. I just cranked the temperature up and left this in there. So it really doesn't matter. Um, if you're cooking at 375, it should maybe take about a half an hour for this to get well cooked, um, but just as a guide. But just check on it, make sure you know that you give it a good stir and fluff everything up. And then the finished result comes out like this. So it comes out a, a little brown, just like stuffing, you know, that we expect it to be. Everything's cooked. I know, it looks so good. I mm -hmm. did taste test it myself earlier, but I will do again because I happen to really like this. This to me is a year round recipe. It's not only for holidays. So I know you've had this at my home before, but please 
try it again. Now, if you're into salt and you're not on a low salt diet, you may choose to salt this just lightly. I chose not to right now because I didn't know what else would be on the holiday table. So mm. it doesn't need salt, but you may choose to add it. Very nice, very nutty. Excellent, and it goes so well with so many different things. You can chicken, turkey, you know, all sorts of different stuff. So you can use it just as a side dish or you know, as part of the main meal, whatever. This is a great one, everyone. Please try it out. Thanks for joining us.